Ken, did you move me over? Yes, okay. I did. All right, you're gonna have to do the same for Janet. Huh, you guys were sent your uh, links, I wonder. No, we weren't, I've checked. I yeah, checked. you get one either, Ken. All, all of them were sent. They must be in junk. We must be having a problem with Zoom links going to junk or something. Maybe because I even confirmed them this morning to make sure they were all sent. Wow. Well, maybe because usually mine goes into other. That happens a lot. They go yeah, into the yeah. other. Yeah. yeah, and I looked there and I couldn't find them. I couldn't see it. So I guess I never thought about looking at junk. I guess that'll be call it in Outlook. No, it's not in junk either. Because I thought maybe they were using an old township email address, but I went in and they're all our township email addresses, the right ones. There's something going on. We'll have to practice with it and see if we can figure out why. Mr. J, I see you're there in attendance. Uh, when your item comes up on the agenda, if need be, we will uh, uh, promote you to panelist. Thank you. All, all, all attendees are on mute unless they're panelists. You're welcome. All right, I'm just looking, waiting on Miss Chick. We'll just give her a moment here to. Commissioner Schenk, did you have a quick question before we get started? Oh, no, I was just, thank you for, for noticing, but I was just trying to do what I needed to do to, to add to uh, public comment. Oh, no. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get to you. Thanks. I just wanted to check. All right. All right thank you. Good, thanks. Uh, there's Miss Chick. Okay, looks like we are ready to go. I like to call it the order of the April 27th. Uh, 2021 meeting of the Northfield Township uh, Board of Trustees meeting at 7.04. You can please join us in the pledge. Just give me one second here.
flag is up. And we can't hear you. I thought it was just me. <laughs> Thanks for speaking up, Jackie. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. Jackie, you're now the host. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else want to do an invocation? There he is. Oh, okay. All right, everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I had lost all audio. Let's see if we can get video back. We got video back here. Uh, so I did call the meeting to order at 704, but I was the only one that heard. So we'll no, call the meeting to order hear that. at 707. That was it. There we go. And uh, if you could all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America to Republic, and to the Republic, Republic which, it stands, which it stands, one nation, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. The invocation, uh, dear Heavenly Father, our Creator, we come to you tonight and ask that you guide us in all of our decision making uh, to do your will and to uh, bless this community in all things uh, and that we, del that we deliberate and uh, discuss uh, in a way that... Uh, is compassionate and caring for one another. We ask this in your name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, roll call, please. Um, Zelenak. Present. Northfield Dignan. County. Whoops. Michigan, Washtenaw County. Dignan. Present. Uh, Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Manley. Present. Northfield Township, Michigan, Washtenaw County. Check. Present. Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Otto. Jackie Otto, present. Uh, Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Nelson. Joshua Nelson, uh, Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Moco. At present, Nate Moco, uh, Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Okay, all here. All right, excellent. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the April 13th meeting. Uh, We'll approve the minutes of the um, April 13th meeting. I have one correction. Okay. I'll support. Okay, there's a motion yeah. by Zellner. Um, what's the by correction? Here. What's the correction? Yeah. The, the correction is on page three under the township owned properties, number six. It says the board within a, about a month. It really was within 60 days. I think we said a month and then we said, no, we're going to need 60 days. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll? Manley, yes. Moco? Yes. Otto? Yes. Chick? Yes. Zelenak? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Passes 7 0. Thank you. Next time on the agenda is adoption of the agenda. At the advice of our attorney, I will be removing item one under new business consideration of the Chestnut Development PUD application from the agenda and remand it to this to be scheduled at a date uncertain at this time. A communication from Mr. Fink protected under the attorney client privilege will be considered at a yet to be scheduled closed session of the Board of Trustees. I will also ask staff 
to also remand back to the file for inclusion on a future agenda. All letters, emails contained within this packet in the addendum and any additional emails or letters that have been yet received regarding the chestnut development. So I'm removing the under correspondence, those letters and item number one off of the agenda tonight. Otherwise I'll make a motion to accept the agenda as amended. Support. Motion by Dignan, supported by Manley. Any discussion? Mrs. Alenock? So you were very, and you, can we explain any more reason of why this occurred other than what you just said? We so cannot at this time. Okay. There was a concern of the attorney. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll, please? Yep. Nelson? Yes. Zelenak? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Otto? Yes. Chick? Yes. Manley? Yes. Moco? Yes. 7-0. And is adopted. Next item on the agenda is petitions and communications, citizens' comments. Please limit your comments to agenda items for the first call to the public. This is a reserved call to the public. The full call to the public will be available at the end of the meeting. If there's anyone that would like to address the board at this time in regards to items on the agenda, please do please raise your hand at this time. Let me pull up the participants list. Ms. Schenk, you've been recognized for three minutes. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have anything specifically about uh, the agenda. I just wanted to say I appreciate being here. I am your county commissioner. And if any of you um, could find my services helpful, I guess services isn't quite the right word, but I look forward to working with you. And um, if any of you would, would want to uh, contact me, um, I'm, I'm always available to talk. My phone number is 734-249-0377. And that also goes for any residents. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Commissioner Shink. We, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, you know, it is one of the things that a lot of folks don't uh, recognize is that we have uh, a great hardworking advocate for us in Northfield Township at the County Commission. And, uh, uh, you know, please, take advantage of that. Uh, and of course, anytime our elected officials come and want to address the board, we're more than welcome to do so. Uh, next, I will recognize Mr. Gordon, you're recognized for three minutes. Um, hi, David Gordon, Helner Road, Northfield Township. Um, I'm, I know there's probably a lot of people out in the audience right now who were expecting to comment on the fact that the largest rezoning and uh, proposal for a development in, in a generation was on the agenda. Um, I really would like to see if it would be possible for the board to. So do you have an item to address that is on the agenda at this time? If not, you're um, welcome to address the board at the last I'm, call. I'm addressing, the, I'm addressing the fact that it, it was removed and it's not on the no agenda. Anymore, we sir. have no explanation whatsoever as. Okay. Moving on to the next individual. David C., you are recognized for three minutes. Yes, uh, Northfield Township resident for 35 years, former planning commission member. Um, I'm kind of surprised that the agenda item has been removed. I will go to the fact that you have a planning commission in place that has recommended Mr. that- Mr. C., are you addressing an item that is on the agenda at this time? If you're not addressing an item that is on the agenda at this time, I'll ask you to re remand your, minute, your uh, comments to the end of the meeting. I will just say that you have a planning commission in place. Okay, moving on to the next person. Angeline, you have been recognized for three minutes. Oh, there you go. Angeline, you've been recognized for three minutes. Okay, so um, 
I was obviously also on to talk about the chestnut development. That being said, at what point are you going to take commentary from the community? How do we find that out? Well, there will be uh, a time here on the agenda for petitions and communications at the end that you're welcome to address things. When the item is brought back forth to the public for on the agenda, again, you will be allowed prior to us deliberating and considering that to address the board at the first call to the public. The first okay. call to the public is pertaining to the items that are being deliberated the day of uh, on the agenda. So that's sometime later this evening? No. Well, you, you can address us this evening, but items that this item will be brought back at a later date. We don't know when yet. Okay. Okay. Do you know approximately what time we'll be able to address you this evening? Just for those of us that are on the call. We don't have a very big agenda ahead of us, so it, I can't imagine it would be very long, but <laughs> okay. depends. that's All fine. Right. I can Thank wait. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye. All right. Next is Mr. Perry, you've been recognized for three minutes. Thank you. Um, I also came to this meeting with the uh, idea of uh, speaking to the chestnut development. Uh, you've said that's not on the agenda, so we cannot speak about it. Um, actually, that's a new uh, thing. So here. You're welcome to address it at the later part of the meeting. I'd like to exercise my free. Okay. Mr. Perry, is in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, we are allowing you to address the public at the end of the meeting. We have reserved time at the beginning of the meeting to address items that are being deliberated by the Township Board at the meeting. You're welcome to do so, but the first call to the public is reserved for items that are before this board tonight. Next, on the, next person in the call of the public is... Mr. Olney, you have been recognized for three minutes, sir. Yes, I'm only 9315 Lakewood Court. Uh, I'd just like to say that I'm happy to see 75 Barker is back on the agenda and that the committee came to a decision to re recommend moving forward with the offer. Um, I hope that the rest of the board uh, agrees with that and that we can get that going since we've been you know, now sitting on it for a while. Um, also, uh, I hope when we, get 70, when we get 75 Barker done, we have a nice development on a North Territorial to go along with it. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Olney. Okay, are there any other members of the public that would like to address the board on items on our agenda this evening? You're welcome to do so. Hold on one moment. One second here. Ms. Winchowski, go ahead. You have three minutes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Susie Win Winkowski, 555. Winkowski, I apologize. No problem. Uh, 555A Telner Road. Um, I'm very curious. I have uh, attended to and watched a lot of meetings, and I've never heard this reserve call to the public. And I'm curious when this change was made, when the board voted. The board didn't vote, ma'am. I am responsible for the agenda, and this was added to the agenda the first meeting that I started running. I am responsible for it as the township supervisor and my statutory duties. So you can just unilaterally make this change for what the people, what the public can say. Actually, the only thing you're in, in law under Open Meetings Act, the only thing that the township board is required to do is have a call to the public at the end of the meeting. That is the only thing we are required to do. We can have a reserved call to the public at the beginning, like our folks to the south in Ann Arbor Township and our folks to the north in Green Oak Township both do. I see. They both have reserved call to the public. 
All right. Thank you for right, the clarification. Yep. Okay. Seeing no other members of the public, we'll move on. Next item on the board member comments and clarifications. I have none. Are there any members of the board that have anything at this time? Ms. Zelena, go ahead, please. So at the last board meeting, we talked about adding to the agenda, a discussion on the call of the public. I disagree Correct. with the new procedure. I want an agenda item at our next board meeting to discuss the call to the public. And I will make a motion to put it on our next board meeting call to the public. It was That's actually on this agenda. It was on this agenda and it got moved when everything got pulled due to the nature of this agenda. It is on the next agenda. The cause of the public is on the next agenda? The discussion of the of, of what of that, yes. Okay, thank you very oh. much. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Chick? I just wanna thank Lenore for bringing that up. Certainly. When I, let's see. Next item on the agenda is uh, old business, 75 Barker Road RFP recommendation. Ms. Elnock, would you like to, I know you, you kind of took the reins of this and worked with uh, folks. I, I did indeed. So I will make motion to enter into a purchase agreement with Michael J, the freelance chef LLC for a price of $81,250 of which 30,000 will be deposited Sorry. with the seller or the seller's agent. Upon acceptance of this binding purchase agreement, buyer will pay the balance to the seller at closing. I'll support. Okay, motion by Zonluck, supported by Nelson. Anyone have any questions? Yes, Ms. Chick. Um, how did we, or how did he arrive at the 81,250 since that is a lot less than what the building was valued at, even in the condition it's in? Well, I can talk to that or we could have Mr. J talk to that. Would you like to hear from Mr. J? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. J? Are you there? Uh, let's see. Hello? Yes, go right uh, ahead. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, we took into account everything that uh, we would plan to restore in that building and something that came across to us uh, I think it was yesterday was these minutes of the meeting was that uh, we also have to put a new well or move the well, which, you know, that wasn't actually in our um, uh, budget, but, you know, we're more than happy to do that. Um, you know, we expect or anticipate to spend between 200 to 325,000 on that building to restore it to its former glory and actually make it something that will entice people to come to Whitmore Lake rather than an extended parking lot, which will generate zero, in fact, cost the township money to tear it down, to haul it away, and you're getting zero revenue for it. So I had to come up with a business decision that I thought was affordable and made sense. I mean, from what we've heard, other um, people have uh, expressed an interest, but because there was no um, allotted parking, Everybody has shied away. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. J. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Zelena. 
So I certainly made the motion. And as you can see at the bottom of page one of two, it says to the committee members recommend the township move forward with this proposal. So you can guess which two. Um, I was, I'm very torn with this um, as far as the price goes. I think it is a unique opportunity though on the other side of having something like this in our town that will bring people to our town. And that to me is the goal. Um, I think it's very unique. And if Mr. J can really truly restore the upper um, floor and make it the banquet space, um, space and the cooking classes, I think that would be a very unique business within our township. So I agree the price is low. Um, that is an area of concern. And then on the flip side, as the committee mentioned, it is extremely creative, probably nothing that personally I ever thought would be coming forward to the proposal. So that is the dilemma, I think, as far as um, this proposal goes. So that's what I would like to add. Thank you, Ms. Zelenek. Mr. Nelson and then Ms. Otto. Um, I, I just want to share my thoughts a little bit. Um, so Mr. J, uh, I, I took a look, uh, you, you, you honestly had a very well-established career. Um, I, I saw this proposal come through and, and personally, I, I will be voting yes, moving forward. Um, I, I think you've got a really unique opportunity to come here to Whitmore Lake. Um, I'm more than happy to welcome you, uh, with open arms. If this passes, I, I just can't wait to see what you do for this township. I understand that the price is low, but what you're bringing is something quite unique that I haven't seen that I never thought I would see in this township. I, I just wanted to thank you for your proposal and bringing this to us because this is a really unique opportunity for me to participate in. I have been a uh, resident of Whitmore Lake um, several years back. We used to live on, um, oh Lord, down by six mile. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Oil? Uh, Fairmount. Okay. Okay. And we were there for three years. And I've always looked at that building and yeah. it was just by chance that I happened to uh, mention to Ken, you know, what's happening to that building. And he said, told me that it's up for, um, for sale. And I jumped at it. You know, I'm happy to invest my own personal money. I'm not going to be borrowing from anyone because I don't believe that it's necessary. And to be beholden to um, a bank for who won't obviously see a vision that I will, um, yeah, I, I vote with my feet. I put my own money into it. Really amazing. Thank you, Mr. J. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Ms. Otto? So I wanted to uh, say uh, welcome and thank you uh, for considering the building. I did think that it was a low price, but um, we've had so many prices on the building, <laughs> six figures all the way down to a dollar. So um, I appreciate that anything that I do appreciate that you giving us a proposal. Uh, for me, um, I did not want to lose the building. Um, through my years of volunteerism in the community, I have virtually lived in that building for a long time. Uh, but to replace that building would have been too costly. And uh, I am glad that we are putting it to good use. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Otto. Mr. Moko. I'll keep it short. I just wanted to say uh, when the proposal came in from uh, Chef Michael, um, it, it the creativeness, it, it really made me excited. Something totally different, probably something not many people expected. The fact that you, 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 know, you plan on doing cooking classes that will bring people downtown who might then walk to the park or walk somewhere else. It's it's an awesome idea, um, and uh, hopefully everybody votes yes on this, and we'll, we welcome you to Whitmore Lake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moko. Ms. Manley. Um, I guess just to follow everyone else, again, you know, my thought was the same thing, you know, low price, but the proposal looked very interesting. 
and actually hearing you talk about it now and, you know, your thoughts and feeling on it, that's, you know, pretty important. And it can feel that, you know, you want this building, you want to bring it back. And I think that's going to mean a lot to the township. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Manley. I, I, I do want to speak to, uh, uh, you know, when I met uh, Michael, uh, it, it was because he was looking in our community to do something like this. It, it wasn't looking at 75 Barker. It wasn't looking, it, but he was looking to locate something, some piece of this vision he had in uh, Whitmore Lake, in Northfield Township. And uh, it just so happened that the discussion uh, went the direction that it did and the opportunity arose to be able to walk him through the building and show him things. And for, for me, that meant a lot. It, it was like you were here looking for this and then the opportunity presented itself. I'm excited about uh, the prospects of this. Uh, I realize this is the first step. I understand there's due diligence and, and such that, that goes into this. Um, I certainly welcome, uh, you know, your, uh, drive for this and vision for this and look forward to it being, uh, a, a attraction to bringing people into our community. Sure. So, all right. Any other board members have anything? Ms. Zelena, go ahead. I, uh, then, let's check. Let, oh, sorry. I just want to let Mr. J know that obviously there's as you said, Mr. Dignan, there's you know, items that we have to both do our due diligence on. Certainly, I have mentioned a few of them on page two of two about getting the survey. And as Mr. Jay said, you know, we'll have to move the well. There's the contamination soil remediation. Um, and then again, we still have to do a purchase agreement. Um, and we did have one initially drawn that I think our attorney could probably use to um, um, use it for this one, but there are some uh, additional items that need to move forward with. Right. And I, I will note this board did approve the dollars necessary to remediate that, that yeah. uh, uh, stage. Right. Yeah. That, that, that uh, contaminated soil that was uh, right. in the phase two yeah. environmental. Yeah. So uh, that, that will be going forward. It was held up by the frost. Now the frost is gone. Uh, so uh, that's going to remove forward here regardless. Ms. Chick, go ahead. Yep, real quickly, um, I just want to thank uh, Mr. J or Chef Jay for speaking. It was good to hear him. It makes a difference. It really does when we hear from the applicant and I appreciate the conversation and the fact that you lived in Whitmore Lake and what you're planning to do uh, for our downtown district and to Mr. Dignan's um, comments about how it all came about. Um, I believe in synchronicity. So this was meant to happen. So thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Are there any other board member comments? Seeing no other comments, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll, please? Yep. Zelenak? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Check? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Manley? Yes. Moco? Yes. Otto? Yes. Passes 7-0. Congratulations, Mr. J. We, we, we do appreciate it. We look forward to uh, working with you. And likewise, us with you. And, you know, if we can help the community. Um, I don't know if any of you follow uh, Facebook and Brighton Happenings. We're part of the chamber up there. And there was this uh, fundraiser to um, do something for the police, the state police, the uh, um, the courts in Livingston County, and we just put our name forward. Said we will feed people whenever they need it, where they need it, and you know we're for the community, and we'll be glad to be a part of Northfield Township. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, we're glad we had the opportunity to meet and and for this to come together. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Certainly. All right. That's exciting. That's yeah. very exciting. Um, all right, moving on to new business. Uh, item two is consider uh, personnel committee's recommendation to hire officer Don King for the code enforcement officer position contingent upon the purchasing of a township vehicle. 
So, uh, so Lenore Zelenak and myself, we uh, interviewed uh, two applicants and uh, John was by far the most experienced person uh, that uh, I, I think if we could have had a wish list, everything, she checked off the boxes. And, um, and so we wanted to move forward. Uh, we uh, did make her an offer. So the recommendation for the position of code enforcement officer would be for Don King. Her starting salary will be at $25 an hour. Um, with the position being part-time up to 30 hours a week. Uh, the code enforcement officer will report directly to the township manager and acceptance is contingent upon the Northville Township Board approving the, the township owned vehicle. So, motion? so I would like to make a motion to approve Don King for the position of code enforcement officer starting at the salary of $25 per hour with the position being part-time up to 30 hours per week with the contingency that um, the township board approves a township owned vehicle. I'll support. Hey, there's a motion by Otto and supported by Zelenak. Ms. Chick. So I have a question. Should, th should there be two motions, one to buy the vehicle? I am, okay. I yeah. am gonna okay. do it. Okay, thank you. That's all. So it got support, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. I like to see the MoCo kids getting involved in civics. Hi, kids. <laughs> yeah, they start hey guys. For two. <laughs> I love it. All right. So, any other discussion on the motion? Uh, I, I I will say that uh, I'm I'm excited, uh, having been the person that's had to deal with this over the last month. Uh, excited to have a code enforcement officer uh, in in place, and uh, I I would hope that. Uh, Ms. King could uh, also be a sworn officer uh, of Northfield Township. And uh, I, I don't know if, um, Mr. Wagner, did you want to comment on that here or? Uh, sure. I, I've worked I, for I, us I, before. Yeah, I just wondered if she could remain a sworn officer of Northfield Township. Yeah, I, I believe she can. She, I mean, in her role as the code enforcement officer, she's not actually working for the police department, but right. she does, I believe, still want to remain a certified officer, which would allow her to qualify with us when we uh, do our shooting qualifications. So I, I don't I don't think there will be an issue with it. I think that's great. There's certainly at all no question whatsoever on uh, her ability to uh, enforce the township ordinances uh, as they're written. So, uh, any other discussion? I, I might add real quick too. Certainly, Ms. Yeah, Wright. I might add real quick too. Uh, I've known I've known I've known Don personally uh, a very long time uh, and professionally. You, you'll be very happy with her. She's uh, she's an excellent candidate there. Thank Wonderful. you, Bob. Thank you. Any other discussion? And seeing none, Miss Manley, will you call the roll? Uh, yep. Otto. Yes. Moco? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Chick? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Manley? Yes. Zelenak? Yes. And that passes 7-0. Great. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion that the township board uh, allocate up to $7,000 for the uh, purchase and refurbishment of a township-owned vehicle uh, for the code enforcement officer. I'll okay, the motion is by Dignan, supported by Chick. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, I I, I might just add real quick. Certainly I'm sorry. Afraid. No, uh, I just. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, just I had that uh, uh, vehicle checked out today just to get an idea, and it is going to need quite a bit more work than I had originally thought. Just to bring it up to safe. So, but. If, if you're at seven thousand dollars, I'll be good with that. Um, um, so I, I probably won't do everything that the uh, guy had recommended, but uh, we'll probably. I was going to put a thousand. I'll probably end up putting two thousand into the vehicle. So great, excellent, Miss Otto, and then Miss. Could Jenny. we could we add a friendly amendment uh, to um, with restrictions of use as discussed 
because we wanted to make sure that the vehicle stays at the at the township office when it's not in use. Sure. Um, to be used only during working hours? Yes. Okay. Yes, to be used only okay. during working hours. Seven, uh, that's fine. And uh, yeah, Ms. Salinuk? Yes, I think it needs to also indicate it that it's um, limited at this time to the code enforcement officer. Only, yes. With restrictions of use during hours, or, uh, during work hours only. All right, with this discussion then, I, I, uh, I'm gonna make a, <laughs> I'm gonna make a motion uh, amendment to uh, state that the vehicle uh, shall only be used by the code enforcement officer during uh, times in which the officer is working for the township. Otherwise, it, otherwise it shall be at the township offices. I'll support. Okay. All right, so there's a motion and there's an amendment. Okay, Any, put on the amendment first, yep. Yep, yep. Any discussion on the amendment? Okay, the amendment was by Dignan, supported by Otto. Does everyone know what the amendment is? Yeah. Yes, okay. Then uh, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll? Yep. Manley, yes. Otto? Yes. Moco? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Chick? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Zelenak? Yes. I'm seven zero. Okay. Now the motion uh, that's before us. I do have a question on the motion really quick, and Ms. Starbuck uh, may be able to answer that. This is a uh, code enforcement position. The vehicle is used exclusively for that. Uh, the $7,000 that we are allocating, uh, where should that come out of? I guess, should we take that, is that out of general fund or should that come out of uh, planning and zoning? Should it come out of, where Where does code enforcement fall? So code enforcement comes, code enforcement is uh, actually planning and zoning. Um, and so we had this back and forth a couple of years ago, it was confirmed it is a general fund uh, expenditure. And then the actual purchase of the vehicle will come out of capital outlay. Um, but the maintenance and the gas will come from planning and zoning. And that was going to be my question is, uh, does the board want to estimate, uh, because we'll have to make an amendment for that um, for some um, uh, maintenance and gas. And additionally, just the date that we expect this person to start and the vehicle to be purchased. Okay, so with with that being said, um, Mr. Wagner, two thousand of the seven thousand to be for repairs. Is that correct? Yes, and and then the five thousand for the will be transferred. Yeah, the for the purchase will be transferred, and I'll have to let Yvette know if that'll go into the police uh, general fund or if that was purchased with drug forfeiture money, because it may have to go back into the drug forfeiture fund. Okay, therefore, I'm going to put forth another amendment that the $7,000 be uh, allocated uh, such that $2,000 uh, is for maintenance and should be allocated to planning and zoning, and the $5,000 should come out of capital outlay. Is there support for that amendment? I'll support. Okay, motion by Dignan, supported by Otto. Any discussion on that amendment? Let's go ahead and vote on that amendment. Ms. Manley? Zelenak? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Jack? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Moko? Yes. Otto? Yes. Manley? Yes. Seven zero. Zero. Okay. If there's no further discussion on the motion, I'm going to ask Ms. Manley to call the roll on the actual motion. Oh, I have a question on the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Go ahead, Ms. Chick. Yes, we're, uh, Ms. Uh, Chief Wagner. Um, is I so is this a police vehicle that you're refurbishing? Uh, it, it's a yeah, a retired police vehicle. Um, okay. It needs some brake work. It needs some tires, um, and then just kind of some general, uh, you know, oil change, maintenance, lube stuff. That's okay. so, Mr. Wagner um, said it's a 2015 Ford Taurus. It is okay. a 20, 2015 Ford Taurus with uh, le a little less than a hundred thousand miles on it. Yep, so it has the police logo off the side. Can we get a code enforcement logo on 
put on or there, something to identify the vehicle? This vehicle actually was unmarked, so it, it doesn't. Okay. So yeah, you could probably three, $400 have some, I mean, you could probably do it a lot cheaper than that too, yeah. uh, have something put on the side. Uh, and, and I would recommend that. Okay, yeah. Does yeah, it have yeah. the radio in it as well? So she, if she needs to, she can use the radio? She will have a, a portable radio assigned to her. Okay. okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Chick. Any others? Yes, Ms. Zelena. So I think um, Ms. Starbuck asked when she would start. Um, she will start once we get the vehicle back. Um, so I'm not sure when that will be, maybe a week or two, Chief. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would think we could have that vehicle done within a week. It's just at, it'll be at Whitmore Lake Auto across the street. So uh, it's just when they can get to it and when they can get the parts to make the repairs. So I would say within a week, we could have the car. Okay. You know, if we get to go ahead here tonight, I'll give them, I'll let them know tomorrow to go ahead and do the work that we want them to do on it. And I, I don't remember actually, Ms. Starbuck, what was your la your other question? Um, I asked, I think all of my questions have been addressed. Um, I asked about maintenance and the start date. Okay. I think that's it. Okay, so the maintenance you're all set with? And, and you mean as far as maintenance, not just of this vehicle, but you're talking the gas as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just want All to operating sure. expenses. Yep. Good enough. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to meet with Officer King when, when she's available to bring her up to date on kind of the stuff that's been in the queue that we've been working with. So I'll have to get with uh, Ms. Otto and Ms. Elinor and set up a time with the, her. That I yeah, can. actually, if she could come to the meeting to introduce herself to us, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Hearing no other questions, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll? Moco? Yes. Otto? Otto? You're muted. muted. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> yes. Manley? Yes. Dignan? Yes. Check. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Zelenak. Yes. Seven zero. Thank you. All right. Well, next item on the agenda is the review of the fiscal year 2021-2022 draft budget changes. And Miss Starbuck is with us. If I remember right, this was a pushover from the change that had to be made with what the, wasn't there a $5,000? No, this is, no, but so those no that was on the previous. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. what basically the changes are highlighted in yellow and it incorporates the raises that the board approved for um, uh, Township Hall or for non-union uh, employees. And then roads, there was some new information on roads. The board has approved up to $200,000 total for road work. And then there was an adjustment on the bond payment um, just to reflect uh, the correct number for this year and for next year. So that, sh that was about a, a, a couple thousand dollar adjustment there. Um, additionally for contacts, I have received new requests from um, the election department, uh, they are planning to hire someone soon. Um, I don't have numbers yet. That would be in the next draft of the budget. So just keep that in mind. Um, Parks uh, is requesting an amendment to their budget due to the costs uh, with the master plan going uh, over budget by $3,000. So an amendment will be coming for that. And um, of course, this code enforcement uh, vehicle that we just approved that will be in the next draft of the budget and um, depending on the decision tonight on land preservation. So um, we're getting some movement that's gonna affect this document. Um, so. Can I ask a question? Certainly. Um, the fact that the, did the uh, $3,000 that went over on the master plan, has that been paid already? Do you know? Yes, yes. So total paid about uh, $11,000 um, for the park master plan. 
and I believe we originally it was approved at about 7,700. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Zelina. So I had a question on page one of 17. It's um, starting out with the revenue sharing. Um, I thought the revenue sharing was gonna be like 755 um, instead of the 7,275. Um, of course that's thousands. Sorry, bear with me. I'm trying to okay. get okay. to that page. Uh, All right. I didn't realize it was going to go down basically from what we currently have, 746, 746,000. Um, I'm sorry, on what page, Lenore? It's, it's the um, first page. page, page one. And, and what line are you asking about? And so the, the state, state shirt. Yeah. So these are these are the estimates on the state of Michigan website for next year. Okay. So um, that's that's what I'm going off of. Okay. So you you're you're saying for next year you thought it would go up again? Yes. Okay. That's just not what I have right now, but I'm happy to amend when I get more information. Nope. Okay, that sounds good. Um, the other thing is, I think roads. Where's roads? <laughs> You probably can find it faster than I can find it. Looking on the revenue side or the expense? I'm looking side? at the cost side. Because I, looking at our minutes, I didn't expect we were going to expend 200000 I thought the total was going to be 200000 including the matching from Washington. Correct. Correct. That was how the board made the motion. Correct. So, so I did email um, both you and Ken about this because it was a little bit confusing trying to understand what yeah. exactly it should okay. be. So I'm happy to change it in the next draft if you can give okay. me exact numbers for each All line. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's on page 13 of 17. Mm -hmm. um, again, the total road work, including the drains, was going to be... Um, basically, I think, what did we say? 132,000. So we can work on that. So I think that will come down. And then the other question I had is for um, the salary raises. Do we increase the salary rate wages for the... This, um, the janitor service? We typically do. Um, in our original discussions, I believe we were holding off on that because we're not sure if those will be contract positions or employee positions. So I'm happy to go ahead and put in the 3% if we think uh, those will be employee positions. I thought they were going to be employee positions. I did too. So I would I recommend we put in the 3% for that. Yep. Is, so, do we need a motion or are we all set with that? Before you, uh, I, I'm happy to do it. I think it falls under the non-union uh, non employees from the previous motion. Um, the janitorial staff does get paid different wages for each, um, right. for, for police, uh, the, the township hall. And then I feel like they do, and then upstairs for the, PSB right. rental fund. So I think um, a wage should be, one wage should be decided upon and then we can go from there. So that would be my only suggestion or feedback on that. And I'm happy to add in the pay increase and how much that would cost. Uh, I, 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 you'll need to explain that to me again. What was that? I know each one is a different price. Community center, upstairs, township offices and the police. Um, I don't know. Does she do the, I'm not sure that they do the community center. I, I'm not like totally clear. I just know from my last conversation with the deputy clerk, all of the wages are different. 
And so yeah. it makes it, um, and I don't know if there's a reason for that. Um, I think uh, personally, I do believe there is a reason because of the amount of effort that each one of these buildings um, are. But should it's, that be in the time that is expended versus the yes. wage? We shouldn't have a different wage for different area of the building. Uh, well, so what are you recommending, Miss Starbuck? We I'm just recommending a, a review of the yeah, wages I, to come. I think on. It, no. I think it needs to come back to the personnel committee to review right. it. That was going to be my thought. So I'll, I'll make the motion to have the janitorial service and uh, there's three individuals right um that that comes back to the personnel committee to review that need to be a motion or can the personnel committee just take it up we can just take it up i mean i think if you wanted it a motion or what i i, I don't think i'll we need support to. it if it's a motion yeah i mean whichever you'd like to do it's fine if so, there's a motion by Otto and supported by Chick. Any discussion? I, I do find it odd that there'd be different wages for different parts of the building, but. Well, I think, yeah, different effort level, different things they have to do. But I don't know, uh, janitor. According to the labor laws, I don't think you can do that. Yeah. Right. So that, that I do not know. Okay. Any, yeah, yes, Ms. Starbuck? Just want to flag, this is a, a great opportunity to say that we do need more help in human resources for issues like this. Oh, yeah. um, because these conflicts do come up quite often. Um, additionally, I just want to give a heads up to folks that we will be reviewing um, all of the other fund budgets at the next meeting. And then we uh, will have time to deliberate on those throughout the month of May. And we will finalize all of the budgets in June. Um, and, and additionally, um, all of the amendments for the current year will be done at the last meeting in June. So I appreciate y'all um, reviewing this over time because it does kind of evolve uh, as we go through the process and we get more information. That's why we kind of spread it out the way we do. Yeah, that's why we need a township manager, Yvette, to handle the uh, HR stuff, yep. One that will actually do HR. Exactly. <laughs> Agreed. All right. So any other discussion on that? If there isn't any, Ms. Manley, will you call the roll, please? Yep. Dignan? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Moko? Yes. Manley? Yes. Zelenak? Okay. Remind me what the motion is. I didn't realize we made one. Sorry. It, it, it was uh, to remand uh, the uh, custodial staff okay. back to okay. the personnel committee. Okay, you didn't, yeah, I, I guess I missed that we were going to do it through a motion, but yes, I'll vote for yes. Check. Yes. Otto? Yes. Seven zero. That motion was by Otto and supported by Chick. So. Okay, thank you. Oh. All oh, right. Just one comment is, um, as you can see, the next agenda item is the Land Preservation Committee. We didn't expect to be our own own, own agenda item. Um, we just expected to be part of the budget because we, as a committee, said we would send back the budget by this date. So, and it was missed um, when I was looking at the material. So it became a second uh, or its own agenda item. That was not really the intent. It was just to be part of the budget discussion. So that's a review item. It wasn't an action item. Um, yeah, that, it wasn't an action item. It was, here's our proposal and it was going to be part of the budget, but it became a, an agenda item. So however, um, Mr. Okay. Dignan, you would like to handle it, but I just wanted to let people know it wasn't really intended to be its own item. It was just intended to be back up in discussion on the budget. Okay. Were there any other questions and, and comments in regards to the budget that's before us? In general, I mean, Miss Starbuck, you're not expecting an action from us at this point, correct? We're just reviewing it at this point. That well, that's correct. If there were any, if if there is any feedback, I would bring it back for the next draft. Um, so it sounds like uh, the next draft will just incorporate um, 
you know, the changes we discussed about parks. Um, I don't know if Kathy wants to talk about the election uh, specialist um, and how much will be requested for that. So there's there's some things that will be coming out of it and, and y'all can discuss it now or discuss it later. Um, for land preservation, uh, just to clarify, right now there's 7,500 in the budget for next year and it looks like the committee is requesting 13,050. Um, so those, those just keep being mindful of those changes. Right. Um, and the other thing I think, right, Ms. Starbuck, and we need to get together, Ken and I, or at least Ken and I, or somebody to talk to you and lay out the roads too. You know, the road expenditure. I just want to not lose sight of that. No. <clears throat> Yourself, myself, and Mr. Wagner can probably get together on that because I know he's directing it. Okay. The, the work. So, Ms. Chick? Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little confused. Are we not talking about land preservation um, amount at, as a separate agenda item, or are we just not talking about it until it comes back on the budget? Well, I think it was intended to be a general discussion about the budget, and you're welcome to address it if you'd like. I would like to talk about it. So you can either move it on to the next agenda, you know, talk it as it is on a specific. I, Again, I just want to clarify that it wasn't meant to be its own agenda item. It was sure. meant to be part of the budget discussion. So I, I personally would like to see um, it's a separate agenda on another, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a separate item on another agenda because there are some questions about some of the expenses, so. Okay, and I, I, I will mention that uh, when, when drafting the budget with <clears throat> Ms. Starbuck, um, th there was a 50% jump in the land preservations budget from 5,000 to 7,500. Uh, when I brought forth the presentation, uh, I, I certainly would want more time to uh, consider uh, the budget amendment or the, uh, the budget that has been brought forth. Um, and I think it's definitely earnest to discuss uh, in further oh, detail. Yeah. I think since it's on it, can we just talk about it? I can just say that the big thing is we were allocated $5,000 this year. We have not spent it. Um, we do, one thing we'd like to do is um, do a community survey and I mean, a real one. We are working with professionals and what we're trying to do is work with the University of Michigan and their um, department that does surveys to see if they can work with us so that it is a legitimate survey, but yet at a cost more affordable. And that's the thought is that 5,000, either we're gonna spend it in this budget or would move it to the next budget. So that is the difference in the cost truly, or mostly there might be another thousand dollars, but that's the, the real difference. Okay, Ms. Otto? So what are you expecting to get out of the community survey that we haven't had in our master plan and our other surveys that we have done? What we would like to get out of the survey is how important land preservation is to people. And I guess in the end, would you be willing to pay for anything to have land preservation? That and I think are the two issues is it important i think people have indicated it it is and the other question is would you be willing to pay anything for it I, and i don't know exactly what the survey would look like obviously um i would expect more than just those two questions um but i that's the real goal is how important is it to you and will it go to um the whole township that needs to be determined again the survey um, company, uh, you know, the many surveys are done by random, random, random sampling, as, you, as people may be aware, and some are done by sending it to the entire township, but that's recommendations we would look for the survey company to provide the township or to provide the information. Um, I know surveys can be done either way, and typically my understanding is that surveys are random sampling. Ms. Alma, anything else, Ms. Otto? No. Okay, Ms. Chick? 
So surveys typically in Northfield Township are used to weaponize. And uh, I'm not really in favor of another survey because I think we already know that the entire township holds land preservation as a, as a priority. How, what the definition of land preservation is to some people is different, however, and I think there's a much cheaper way to find out exactly how interested people are in land preservation if they're willing to pay for it, and that is to put a millage on a ballot. I think it's an expense of uh, $5,000 for this year might not be a good idea considering all the other expenses that the land preservation is asking funds for. And we may want to consider it the following year or we can put it on a ballot. And I'm not in a, favor of $5,000 for a survey. And if there's another That's issue on the ballot, it doesn't cost us anything. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. That's um, good. Um, good information. That's why we're having this discussion. Thank and that's you. why we put, you know, the information detailed so that we could facilitate this type of discussion. That's what we're here to do. Okay, thank you, Ms. Chick. Mr. Moko. I just wanted to say, I mean, we just last week approved, or last meeting approved 7,500. And uh, already, I just find it kind of hard to believe that the land preservation is coming back to the well, wanting to double that already. Um, and and that's uh, second and third, uh, Janet and Jackie on there. Uh, we've already done a thousand surveys on this, but I mean it's the LPC's money and they're free to do what they want. But I I just I still find it hard. Uh, we're going to double. They want to double the budget without anything to show for it. Excuse my voice. I'm trying my best. Nope. Like I said, you that's me. why you're here on the agenda to talk it over. So I appreciate everybody's comments and. I will Thank certainly you. take back to our next meeting, which is uh, next Monday. Thank you, Mr. Moko. Anyone else have comments in regards to this? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Next item on the agenda is announcements. Um, does anyone have any announcements? Ms. Manley. Um, I just have a comment on the budget. Um, next meeting, I'll probably be bringing something about an election position if it is determined that we will have an election in August. So I didn't bring anything forth today because I don't know if anything's going to be for sure. So possibly be expecting something on the next meeting. So okay. That's it. All right. Any other announcements? All right, seeing none, we will go to the uh, second call to the public. This is the open call to the public in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. Anyone that would like to address the board can do so at this time. Right. Let's see. Mr. Grono, go ahead. Or Grono? Yes, Sorry. thank you. Thank you. Um, well, folks, I just uh, uh, wanted to express my, uh, my thanks and concern for everyone that's considering our project. Uh, I know that uh, it's been tabled, so to speak, or, or deferred to a later time. I, and I know everybody prepared to speak tonight, and I'm sorry you're not able to speak, or maybe you're going to speak now. So I certainly want you to know I'm listening. And... Um, and I appreciate everybody's concern about our project. It's, it is a big project and it's going to be a pretty major change. And, uh, you know, I know people are very concerned about it. So um, I just want to, I just want to, uh, to, to put an invitation out there uh, to everyone that's going to speak tonight and, and in the future meetings, uh, the public hearings to um, uh, get their questions answered by me directly. And uh, we're going to hold, we're going to hold an open house um, prior to our next, uh, public hearing prior to the next meeting. Our company is, we happen to have a, con, a project under construction right now that is going to be nearly exactly what we are proposing uh, there in your community. Um, it's called Chestnut Woods. It's on M59, just east of Tule Road. Um, on Saturday, May 8th, uh, from 10 a.m. till noon, we're going um, to put an open house together. We'll have representatives from our company there. Um, we will be giving tours. It's mid-construction, so it's a really cool opportunity to see what's behind the drywall. 
Um, a lot of people, you know, it's kind of fun to know what construction's all about and what's going on with Energy Star and how you make units quiet. And um, it, uh, it's, just, it's just a unique opportunity that I see presented to us here by this delay. So Saturday, May 8th from 10 to noon at 2800 Highland Road in Howell, I will be there at 10 a.m. Uh, our community manager will also be there. Um, our construction manager, a lot of people from our company will be there. And what I'm there to do is simply to be there to, to answer your questions and, and to address your concerns. Um, I know there's some concern out there by, by a segment of the community um, and, and maybe even some of the residents who live in our community, Chestnut Crossing, um, will be there to talk to you about the, how they enjoy living in that community and what it does to the quality of their life. So um, with that being said, I just want to put that invitation out there for Saturday, May 8th, uh, 10 a.m. Um, my doors will be open. You'll see construction in progress. Um, we're, we're, we're about at the drywall stage for some of the units. You'll be able to see the exterior finishes. I'll explain what all the building materials are, the architecture, um, the mix of colors, the mix of building variety, how we try to make it a really high quality uh, project. We make it a really high quality place to live. And maybe- 25 seconds, Mr. Grona. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank uh, you. But anyway, you are all invited Saturday, May 8th, 10 a.m. at 2800 Highland Road. I'll be there to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Julie Kapnick, you're recognized for, oh, let's get you to unmute there. Are you there? You're permitted, you're still, Julie, you're still muted. Can you hear there me? You. Now we can hear you, go right ahead. Sorry, Excellent. About that. you've got three oh, minutes. Oh, that's okay. Um, I just wanted to show up this evening um, as a 18 year resident of Whitmore Lake, um, I own a home here. I've been here for quite some lot time. I'm looking forward to growth of our community and I'd like to support the development that um, is being talked about. And I know that you don't get a lot of people showing up at these meetings, um, usually until there's something really important or they feel very strongly about. Um, and I feel strongly about growth in our community. And I think that the development that the Chestnut Home Builders um, have put forward, their proposal um, would really be a wonderful addition to our community. Um, so I'd like, I just showed up to voice my support um, as a homeowner of quite some time in this community. Thank you, Julie, appreciate it. Just one moment here, we'll go to the next person. David C., you've been unmuted. Go right ahead. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you. I'm going to be real brief. Three quick points. Um, the development that is proposed for the Leland property, the Chestnut Hill, is far too dense for your master plan. And one of the items that I would really like to see addressed is your attorney has asked you to pull this from the agenda at the next meeting. Hopefully, if we can get enough people that want to hear about it, will know why the attorney asked you to pull this from the agenda, particularly because I believe that it may be that it does not apply with your master plan and the recommendation from the planning commission was to deny it. Second item, Ms. Chick, I don't think you have a clue what the Township Preservation Committee can do. And to try to say you're gonna try to cut their funds when they're trying to better your township, you should listen to that. Last item, Mr. Dignan, I want to tell you that you pulled this item from the agenda and you had five citizens that wanted to talk. I was a former commissioner of and a chair of one of the committees in this township. You do not need to be rude to those people. I'm done. Thank you, David. We appreciate your time. Just a moment for the next individual.
Ms. Prison, you've been recognized for three minutes. Hi, it's Marissa Prison, 32 Shrum Drive. Um, I want to thank the board for the feedback on the Land Preservation Committee's budget request. I'm pleased to hear some support for our mission and the work that we're doing. Um, speaking of our work, I wanted to tell everyone who's listening that we are hosting a spring wild flower nature hike at the Whitmore Lake Preserve on May 22nd um, at 10, 12, and 2. You can find more information on the township's website under the Land Preservation Committee, or you can go to our Facebook page and sign up. There is a link inside, so don't just click going on Facebook. You actually have to register um, on the eventful link that's there. Um, I wanted to clarify um, something about the budget. Um, we weren't notified as a committee that the budget was coming for a first review. So when we saw that it was, we, we prepared a more formal request because we cost, saw $7,500, but we hadn't discussed at all how we would spend any money. Um, so then we prepared a formal professional request and submitted it for discussion for the board. Um, we weren't coming back to the well. We were doing what we thought a, resp a fiscally responsible committee should do by submitting recommendations on how we would spend a budget. So I did find that comment a little bit offensive um, to the volunteers that Put their work into this. Um, but I thank you for your time and your service and enjoy the rest of your meeting. Thank you, Ms. President. One moment here. We'll go to the next individual. Lori Ness, I'm sorry, Lori Nelson Daniels, you've been recognized. For Thank you. I've, I've lived here for 15 years. We own a house. Um, I'd just like to speak on the development going on at North Territorial and Wilmer Lake Road. Um, if we want to be forced to widen our roads and still have our roads congested, if we would like an influence, an influx, excuse me, of drugs in our school, if we would like an influx of crime in general, if we'd like to take away the beauty of our area and replace it with I'm sorry, you could say you were adding paint and having variety of houses, but they're still just building. If we wanted all that, we could live in Canton or Plymouth. I ask anybody listening to drive to Canton and Plymouth and see what has happened to those towns. Um, switching gears for the Preservation Society, being dismissive and just saying, let's put that on the next um, you know, with the bit up for millage, that's not really discussing much of anything. I really do believe the survey through U of M was a great idea. Thank you. That's all I had to say. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. Appreciate your time this evening. All right. Mm -hmm. Angeline, is it Robotaro? Uh, close, Robotaro. Robotaro, okay, go ahead. You have three minutes. Okay, thanks. Thank um, so I'm also a resident in Northfield Township, and I think in all the debate, what we do see is that people have a desire for affordable housing that they can purchase, um, and we want residents who have a stake in the community. So this proposed development has about 200 rental townhouses, which does not create a new pool of long-term residents. Um, our students that are really going to stay in our school system. Uh, I do feel like it is too dense for the location. If we want to build these types of uh, townhouses or rental apartments, uh, we have spots on Main Street that are looking for development that are in subdivisions and in those areas that are more appropriate. Uh, again, I'm not asking for no development, but I am asking for us to consider something that is less dense and fits in with the surrounding area west of North Territorial. Why not single family homes that people can buy on five acres or three acre home sites? There's no reassurance that if this passes, more development will not happen. Uh, potentially 300 could be put on this parcel. Uh, that's not even the entire piece of property. Um, some of us have said that this will never get turned into Wixom or South Lyon, uh, which has seen a lot of change over the last 30 years. Um, it sets a precedence, and I have no uh, reassurance that if this doesn't, if this happens, it won't create a toehold that will allow for a more dense development later on. We have traffic issues, we have sewer issues. Uh, I think people are aware of that, and I don't think that adding 260 to 300 houses is going to help. 
Uh, we're also in a housing bubble. Uh, if any of you do construction, which I am also a real estate investor, a two by four costs four times what it did a couple of years ago. Uh, anything that's built right now is going to be much more expensive. And once this housing bubble bursts after COVID settles down, uh, those homeowners that have purchased can be underwater. Uh, if you look at developments like Cherry Hill Village, uh, which were uh, dense developments put on the edge of Canton, uh, that development took over a decade to fill and residents there got trapped again uh, underwater when that bubble burst. There's also uh, another development in Canton you might have seen in the news with Palte residents who moved in next to an open field. They were told they were not going to be developed. And again, the developer has gone back on their word. So again, I don't think any of us oppose the sale of the property. Uh, we just want to understand really what this consists of. And we want people to consider something that's a little bit less dense and more appropriate growth for the community. You have 25 uh, seconds. We're fortunate to have beautiful natural resources here. Let's be careful about how we grow the community in a deliberate way that preserves our open space in the character that we have now and for the generations ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Thanks. Ms. Henshaw, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Three minutes. Yep, you have three minutes. Uh, Julia Henshaw, 4681 Six Mile Road, lived here for 30 plus plus years. Happy to hear about uh, Officer Dawn getting a code enforcement job. Uh, she's been out here a couple of times. We know, you know, we live in the, in the periphery. We almost live in Salem Township and we almost never see police. But whenever I see Dawn, I always say hi and she waves and that's probably been five times in 30 years, but she's been really nice. So good for her. Also happy about chef, the chef moving in, that would be fine. I don't wanna comment on the PUD per se. I just wanna say that I am baffled by what is happening. I cannot figure out the process for this. Uh, I watched the, sat all the way through the uh, planning commission meeting. I'm sitting through this meeting. I understand it's going back to the planning commission. Am I right? Am I wrong? Can one of you correct me? Can one of you tell me what the process is? Um, do we have, you know, if it goes back to the planning commission, does it go to the trustees? Does it go to the planning commission again? There's going to be some kind of a meeting about it. It's very, very, very confusing. And I try to pay attention to the township. And this one has got me absolutely stumped. I don't know what's happening. So if anybody could even comment now, I mean, are you guys allowed to comment now on what the process is? No, nobody yeah. can tell Maybe, maybe you could put it in an email. I think you have my email address. I just don't understand. And I want to understand. I'm not opposed to development, but I don't understand the process and the sequence of events and who's on first and who's on second and who's on third. I don't understand it. And I think I'm reasonably intelligent and paying a fair amount of attention. So I would really appreciate some kind of clarity on the process of approving this development because it is major. You know, whether you like it or not, it's major for our township. And we were given almost no notice about it. Um, you know, how, what, is, what is the citizen supposed to think about this, about, about who has a say in the matter? Um, so that's, that's really what I wanted to bring up tonight. I don't understand. And if somebody can please explain it, I would be very grateful. And I believe there are a lot of other people like me out there who don't understand it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henshaw. Just a second, we'll go on to the next individual. Cecilia, you've been asked to unmute. Thank you. There you go. You're recognized for three minutes. Cecilia Infante, East Five Mile, Whitmore Lake Road. Um, my first comment is I'm absolutely thrilled to hear about the hiring of an enforcement officer. And not even just that. You know, we spent a lot of time trying to improve and strengthen our ordinances 
but as a PC member, that's really to no effect if you can't enforce them. Um, I'm equally as happy to understand that we are providing her a vehicle. And I hope that's just one of the many tools that we are giving her to do her job well. Um, like something as simple as the signage that Ms. Chick suggested, but certainly, you know, laptops, phones. I mean, sh she's an officer, so perhaps she already has these technologies, but I'm just thrilled. My second comment is that I don't know what happened with the chestnut um, proposal, but if you are still listening, Mr. Brona, I will be there on May 8th. And I think it's wonderful that you make that invitation to everybody. Absolutely, I've been researching your properties and your developments, and I think you have a wonderful product. And our community could benefit enormously from it. Um, the issue of density was a major concern with the PC, and maybe we'll find out what happened, but there were some serious discrepancies between what happened at the meeting, as you can see in the draft minutes of the meeting, and the planner's report and summary of what happened at the meeting. And I'm hoping that's what's getting worked out so that we can move forward. The PC is really meticulous about following process. We are so devoted to the integrity of the process and what we do. It, it's something the community needs to understand also. And I think in this case, there's a lot of clarification need to be made. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Afante. All right, uh, next individual is Erica. Uh, you can unmute, you're recognized for three minutes. I am also very curious as to what's going to be happening across the street from my property. I live directly across the street from the Leland property. It is a huge possible development and I definitely have concerns because basically I'm adjacent to the property. The only thing that separates us is what more like road. I'm concerned that it's not really going to bring much to our township. The taxes, the possible students in our school, the possible foot traffic to our businesses. Those are only maybes. The taxes are going to be a wash. The schools, we have school of choice. There's no guarantee that any of those homes are going to put children in our schools. If they're rental properties, that is a huge concern because people who rent do not have the same concern for how the property looks as someone who owns the property. It's also not going to bring in as much tax revenue. I would, I'm going to continue to follow this process, however I may. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Erica. Appreciate you coming out tonight. Just a second here. Brian, you can go ahead and unmute. You're recognized for three minutes. Well, I tried on, let's see. I'm gonna ask you to unmute again. You there, Brian? Now you got it. We can hear you now. <laughs> All right, right great. Ahead. You have three hey, minutes. Thanks. thanks, you guys. Um, sure. So my name is Brian. I live over on Timbercrest. I've been here for about six years. My wife and I own a house. We've got two kids in uh, the elementary school. Um, I just want to say not necessarily specific to the Chestnut development, but to the township in general. You guys are in a unique spot to do something with with Whitmore Lake and the township. Uh, since we've been here, everything has been stalled and pushed away for fear, uh, fear of growth, um, fear of change. You guys have this power 
to change the face of of the township. Um, the area is not does not have the best reputation, which you guys can change. And it's why we've all worked so hard as a community to elect you guys. As far as us turning into Plymouth or Canton or South Lyon, I don't think one development would do that. We all moved here for the same reason, because it's a small <clears throat> community with lots of green space. And the master plan will ensure that it stays that way. So one development could bring positives. It could bring negatives, but you don't know. But why let fear stop us from moving forward? The, the township has been stagnant for so long. You guys have the opportunity to start doing something. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your time tonight. Ronald Thielman, if you want to unmute. Yes. Okay, I can hear you just fine, sir. You have three minutes, please. Great. Uh, thank you for, for hearing us out. Thank you. Uh, my wife and I uh, moved to Whitmore Lake about six years ago. And, and like was said previously, all of us basically came out here for the exact same reason. Um, a much more rural, green uh, lifestyle that most of us want to raise our kids in. Um, I, for one, am concerned about this incredibly densely populated uh, plan that is uh, coming up. Um, though I agree, I don't think necessarily that will turn into a Plymouth or Canton or, or that having something like this come in that is seemingly a little too dense, uh, it sets a precedence in terms of all of a sudden now you're gonna have a Walmart in the middle of town. And then you're going to have, you know, an Amazon warehouse come in. And so this really can be a catalyst that starts that sort of thing, which I think most of us in this community came to this community to avoid realistically. Um, not saying that we shouldn't do progress. And honestly, a lot of the progress that has started in downtown is absolutely wonderful. And it's fantastic that we're growing in that regard. But I think when you start adding three, 300 or plus homes in a smaller area, it just starts drawing in things like a Walmart and now you've got a strip mall and then that gets emptied. Um, I think we should look at a much more measured approach in this. Um, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time this evening. The, let's see. Karen Alexa. Hello. You recognized for three minutes. Hi, thanks for listening. Um, Karen Alexa at 7210 Whitmore Lake Road. I believe my driveway will be right across the street from the driveway based on the graphs I've looked at. It's to me, would be a wonderful subdivision with nice homes and parcels, but the complexes that he's proposing is so dense. And to me, I look at it and I think it's ridiculous to put something like that on that farm. But I'm coming to you and begging for mercy that you deny the density, ask him to downsize. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Miss Alexa. Okay. Okay, if there's anyone else that would like to address the board, you can do so by raising your hand at this time. 
Mr. Gordon, go ahead and unmute. You are recognized for three minutes, sir. Thank you, uh, David Gordon, Helena Road. I've lived in the community for 40 years. I built my house more than 30 years ago. Um, my wife and I have raised our son here. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they, they would like to see some development in the community, but even a lot of them think that the proposed development right now is too dense and doesn't fit in the area. And I've poured over the master plan um, because some people say that it actually fits the master plan. But I, I, once you, you uh, have 75% of the development being apartments, the definition that it falls in is high density, not medium density, according to the master plan itself. And if you look at page 41, the, the general view of overview of the interchanges at six mile territorial and US 23, the very first paragraph says the central feature of this sub area. And it goes on and it says, basically this sub area is best suited for low density residential and agricultural land uses. They say it says low density there. It's envisioned as medium density, which doesn't bring up apartments at all. And the proposal that you have in front of you has 208 apartments. It's essentially 75% apartments and less than actually about 25% uh, small townhouses. I, I would agree with the people that are speaking that say, you know, it would be nice to have some kind of development there, but this is simply too dense. And in any thorough reading of the master plan doesn't fit what uh, the master plan says we're looking for in the spot. So I'm very encouraged that a vote wasn't taken tonight. And I hope that the Board of Trustees, when they meet with the attorney, uh, return this plan to the Planning Commission so that they can have their concerns addressed. As uh, one of the Planning Commissioners mentioned, the report you received in your packet from the planner totally fails to convey uh, the concern that was voiced by four of the seven Planning Commissioners who said basically they found this plan to be unacceptable. If you listen to the meeting, you will find that to be uh, the position they took, which is why they voted against the PUD the first time it was brought up to them. You have 25 seconds, sir. And when they, uh, when they voted in favor of sending it to you, it was with the conditions being attached. And unfortunately, uh, they are not in the version that you have from the planner. It, it is misleading. So I hope that you... Uh, return this thing to the, to the planning commission. You have some excellent planning commissioners and they will, they will do a good job. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Okay, if there's anyone else that would like to address the board? Okay. Mr. Only, go ahead and unmute and you have three minutes, sir. Good evening, Adam Only. Um, I just wanna speak on behalf of the Chestnut development. I know it's not on the agenda, but it's frustrating to hear the fear mongering going on from the public of you know how if it brings more kids, it'll bring more drugs. If it brings more people, it'll bring more crime. Um, just playing on people's fear. Um, I, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't live in a life of fear um, on people I don't know. Uh, also be mentioning uh, the master plan when the master plan got, you know, revised what eight plus years ago, designated future land use. That's exactly what this is. Future land use with that exact lot designated for what this developer is asking. It's also frustrating to hear that the planning commission in the last meeting they had, they were, they, they didn't, know what was going on they had some of the planning commissioners didn't know the difference between the rezoning and the pud um uh, the planning commission chair uh, mr roman and Ms. conicky were trying to explain to them the difference they were asking questions at the wrong time they were 
you know, voicing their concerns on one thing when it should have been another. And they, they just, I, I feel like they weren't educated or informed, some of them, on this. Uh, and then when it came to vote, they voted finally 7 0 to pass the PUD with conditions. And, and now there's some confusion on what they voted for. I, it's, it's frustrating to have um, planning commissioners that vote on something and then later voice their concern of what they voted on. So um, I hope the, this comes back to the board and that the board uh, acts accordingly and works with the developer to get this to the next stages. Um, right now, obviously in the preliminary stages with conditions so that we can get it back to the planning commission for its final proposal. And then once the planning commission reviews the final proposal, it can go back to the board so that the board can approve the final proposal. Um, uh, that's really, uh, I'm excited to see what um, Chef, I believe it's Chef Jay, I might be getting that wrong, can do with 75 Barker as we've, you know, had that on agendas for it seems like five years now and hopefully that can move forward with something to uh, benefit our community as well as this proposed development. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Olney. If there's anyone else that would like to address the board at this time, raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, which is board member clarifications. I do wanna make one quick statement in regards to uh, one thing I strive for in, in uh, being the uh, chair of, of our meetings here is to try, to try to have an orderly and respectful uh, dialogue and, and meeting. Uh, we try to run an efficient meeting, but uh, I you know, want to remind the public, the purposes of these meetings as defined by law is for the township board to do the business of operating the township. That is why these meetings are held. On, a lot of people don't understand. These are not public community meetings. These are meetings of the board in public to conduct the township's business. And uh, we do so, and in, in doing so, uh, that's important business that must get done. Certainly, uh, I believe strongly in having a time set aside on the agenda for the public to uh, comment. But in my uh, 10 plus years in public service, uh, 20 plus years actually in public service in Northfield Township, uh, I've never believed that it is right to have a call to the public only at the end of the meeting and not to give the public an opportunity to, to address items that are before the, any, any board uh, that are being deliberated that day. Um, but with that in mind, uh, you know, that is why I have uh, made the decisions that I've made. And we will discuss this at our next meeting. But what, what's important to me is that every individual in the public has an opportunity to address the board at, at an appropriate time and that every member of the public that wants to address the board on an item that is being deliberated that given night has an opportunity to address our board prior to that item being deliber deliberated. I think that's very important. Um, I certainly uh, want everyone from the public to know that uh, my respect for you and your ability to speak uh, is held in very high regard. Um, I've been on that other side of the microphone, and it takes a lot of courage to step up and, and speak. Um, a lot of times folks are nervous because they've not done that before, um, and you need to give yourselves pats on the back and kudos, irregardless of what position you take. The fact that you're participating in the civics of what's going on in our community is very important, and, and I don't ever want anyone to feel like they're discouraged but do understand uh, we do have the business of the township before us. So I just wanted to, to say my piece on that. Um, and uh, I welcome uh, any other board member comments at this time. Yes, Ms. Zelenak. So 
I did spend a lot of time on this packet to understand the process of the chestnut development. And again, when are we going to be able to explain the process and what happened with chestnut development to the public? I think this is very important. I would agree. Um, is my understanding a communication from Mr. Fink? will be coming to us that is protected under attorney client privilege and uh, we will need to be considering that in a future meeting that i hope to get scheduled um i will we will put it on the schedule at some point um once we have a conversation tomorrow uh, for a closed session with the board of trustees to discuss the matter okay um, thank you um, it, 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 yeah um I uh, can say one thing, this is a process problem. That's what it is, so. Yeah, so I would like to thank the public for coming out today and Absolutely. speaking their minds on whatever they wanna to talk to the township about, especially in, in general. And I would like to say absolutely um, this area that we're talking about should have development and it absolutely it should have commercial development. I absolutely think it should follow the master plan. And I absolutely think we all need to work together to make sure we bring what the best thing we can possibly bring to this community. This certainly is um, something that we haven't seen in a long time and it will you know, define that area and our community forever, much longer than I'm around for. So I do appreciate the input. I look forward to working together to make sure we bring the, what we can best to the community and I would also like to say about uh, the Land Preservation Committee, we did submit the budget, um, Mr. Dignan, and to you and Jennifer um, in time to get on the agenda. Um, just wanted to bring that up. And um, I, I do find that the LPC gets criticized pretty much every time we're on the agenda. I, as an elected official, have tough skin. Criticize all you want. I will answer the questions the best of my ability. I'm not so sure about all the volunteers that spend their time on this committee or other committees like the Parks and Recs. So if you wanna draw criticism, certainly draw it to me because um, I am the elected official. So those are my comments. Thank you, Ms. Zelnock. Ms. Manley? I'm on mute. Yeah, I again just want to thank everyone for their comments and their letters and their emails. Again, this is going to come up again, so feel free to email us if you have not already. Um, everything will be included in the packet. If you've sent us an email after the packet went out, and if you want that included in the packet, please let us know. Um, we just don't want to blanket put them in there without your approval. And get, you know, just thanks for you know keeping up with us and listening. And hopefully we can get this figured out. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Nelson and then Ms. Chick. Um, I, I also want to thank the public as well um, for um, despite despite the discrepancies with the call to the public, there's many of you stayed on, many of you stayed on tonight despite um, despite some initial uh, problems. And I'm, I'm kind of happy that you did. I wanted to hear from each and every one of you. To me, that's important. The amount of feedback that we've gotten for, against, in between with the chestnut development, I, I am thankful to see the public taking time out of their day to communicate with us, to actually send us their opinions. Just so you know, I, I want the public to know that I am reading each and every one of your emails thoroughly. I'm, tr I'm trying to make, and I can speak for the rest of the board on this. We are trying to make a well-informed decision on this and, 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 and figure this out for the benefit of the township, for the benefit of each and every one of you. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, I'm here to listen to all, all, all uh, the different sides, all the different takes. To me, that's the most important thing. And that's my civic duty here as a trustee. Um, have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Ms. Chick and then Ms. Otto. Um, yeah, I wanted uh, to clarify a couple of things. I, there was a comment that four of the, of the commissioners voted against the PUD. None of the commissioners voted against the PUD. The only, we had two votes that night as vice chair of the uh, planning commission, I can tell you this, um, that there were two, two motions and two votes. The first motion was to, for the rezoning. That was voted against. There was no vote to approve 
at the planning commission level, the PUD, the only motion at the planning commission was to send the PUD to the board for approval. That passed unanimously. So the PUD did not fail at the planning commission. We didn't vote to approve or deny. We can't. We're a recommending committee or recommending board. We can't uh, approve that. Um, and to Julia's comment, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, this is new to us as not new to us. We, it, it's, uh, we haven't seen a development number one in what, 20 plus years. Uh, 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 a development of this size. You know, we've seen conditional uses and that process pretty much everybody's pretty familiar with. Uh, the planned unit development in this is done differently and it's done in two phases. There's a pre preliminary approval and then there's a final approval. So I think people were thinking that this meeting was to approve the planned uh, chestnut development and it was done, it's not. They've got to come back anyway. Uh, it, they have conditions that they have to meet before it comes back to the board. Uh, and I wanted to speak to the issue of the mix up in the minutes and the planners report as well. Um, uh, that was not, uh, that, that was corrected and there was a second uh, memo that was put in the packet today with the corrections from the planner. So if you it's read the first one and you haven't seen the second one, read the second one. Um, there's a little more information in there, but yeah. Um, and the planned unit development is a different animal. It's uh, not handled the same way uh, uh, some development might come to the township and say, hey, can I do this? Um, they're given a little more leeway than uh, a regular request. So I just wanted to say um, to Julia, I feel bad, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that don't understand it. So we're getting a lot of questions and hopefully we can get that cleared up um, in the near future, certainly. Uh, to uh, the Land Preservation Committee. Uh, yes, they have presented a budget too. And I wanted to David C. let him know, we're not cutting their budget. They have a budget amount. They're asking for more money uh, in the budget. And so we're scrutinizing that because we're supposed to be fiscally responsible. That's our duty as board. And uh, we wanna make sure that whatever money that is given is used wisely. And we have the right to do that. So we're not cutting their budget. They're asking for more. We want to. We have want time to consider it. It'll come back to the board. Uh, and then I want to thank Cecilia for her comments on the planning commission. It's not an easy job, uh, and we do scrutinize everything that we can. There are a lot of questions at the commission about chestnut development, and uh, and understandably so. And all those questions were answered, and the conditions were um, submitted, and they'll come back again to the board. So that's all I have. So thank you. Ms. Ms. Chick, can I ask one question? I, I watched that planning commission meeting again today um, for, for my own sake, and there were three votes that evening. The, 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 uh, to, the one was a 4-3 against the rezoning. Yes. And then there was a 4-3 against the PUD that was without, without conditions. There was a vote a four to three against because it was put forth as to be approved without conditions. And then Mr. Roman right. put forth a third vote of with the conditions. So I just wanted a point of clarity there. I just, you know, I, I, I just happened to watch it two hours ago. So I mean, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I did miss that one, but they want to make the, sure that yeah, the planning commission didn't vote against the PUD. That's that's the, the nuts and bolts of it. Right. Um, In the end, they just send it to the board. Yes. Right. They did unanimously. Yes, Miss Otto. Okay. I, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out as well. And perhaps the most difficult aspect of governance um, is need to balance the various often competing interests of property owners and residents in accordance with our master plan and with the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. Uh, and still assure the physical and um, fiscal stability of our township. Planning and zoning are the tools uh, available to decision makers, such as the planning commission and to the township board to balance the in interests of the private property rights against the need to protect public interests and the fiduciary responsibility of the township. As each of us as elected officials we're not only accountable to you and those that have spoke today, but we're accountable to all citizens in the township and to the fiduciary responsibilities of the township. 
And our fiduciary responsibilities always come first. So we have to follow the law. And um, the Michigan Enabling Act is the law. So that's, and um, Julia, um, uh, she did ask for information. I do have a copy of the Michigan uh, Zoning Enabling Act uh, of, ten, uh, of 110 of 2006. And it does talk about PUD and what is required of the township. So I'll get that to you. All right, Mr. Moko, did you have anything this evening? Yeah, it's the same thing as everyone else. I wanted to thank everybody for the correspondence and the emails. Um, you know, everyone gets read. And without everybody's opinion, you know, it 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 forms our, our thoughts on everything. And, you know, I, and I want to thank uh, Chef Michael and Steve Gronow for coming out tonight. That meant a lot. I'm glad we got a code enforcement officer hired. That's a good step in the right direction. And um, you know, I, I encourage everybody to keep keep on sending your thoughts and, and go if you're around that Saturday, go visit the development. Um, through was a Howell development out there two weeks ago. Um, and I'll give you an idea what you're looking at. And uh, that's all I'll really say on that. And thank you everyone and that's it. Thank you, Mr. Moko. Thank you everybody for uh, coming out this evening. Uh, I don't really have anything else. Uh, we will be uh, watch the township uh, website as well as uh, our, our social media. We will be posting. I do understand uh, that uh, the decisions that we are gonna face in the future are very important decisions. And uh, I do want folks to know that your correspondence uh, are uh, being collected, are being read, are being a part of the packet, the ones that were here tonight and the ones that have come in since, and the ones that will come in from now until the packet deadline for the for the meeting where we will address uh, the, the development, though they will be included. It, it's very important to us that uh, you be a part of this process. It, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's a testament. We've got uh, quite a few people on here at the end of our meeting. Um, we appreciate you guys being there. And, uh, you know, the, be the best way we can help our community is to all be involved. So uh, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Support. Okay. Motion by Dignan, supported by, was it Manley? Yes, okay. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing right, none, Ms. Manley, well, I mean, all in favor say aye. 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 The one more thing we can make a motion on that we can vote voice vote. All right. Thank you, everybody. It's 858 PM. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank, good night. Night. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.